Hey, welcome to Fridays with Zell. Today, we are going to talk about Git. You are going to learn what is Git and how to set up Git on your computer. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I will be sharing stuff on my screen in this um, session today. So a podcast will probably not be the best way to consume the content. You might want to go to YouTube and watch the video instead. And I left you uh, the link in the show notes so you can get to it quickly. Now let's start. First of all, what is Git? The best way to explain Git is with an analogy. So let's start by doing that. I want you to imagine that you are playing a game. In this game, you can create save points. Now, what do you do with a save point? So what happens is when something bad happens, like when you die in a game, you have to restart from a point where you saved and continue from there. If you did not create a save point, what you do is you go all the way back to the beginning of the game and start playing from there. Now that's not a very fun experience, so creating save points are always good when it comes to playing games. Now, Git is kind of like a save point system for all of your work. Whenever you create a save point in Git, um, in Git we call that creating a commit. So whenever you create a commit or and or creating a save point when it comes to Git, you can go back to that point in time to load to load the game. Um, so if you create five save points, you can go back to any of the five save points and load your work from there. So that is what Git is for. We call it a version control system because it can save different um, points of your work at different times. And you can also create versions and tagging and there are a lot of features when it comes to Git. And I will be unrolling and revealing some of these features as we go along in this series. It doesn't help to talk too much about Git when we haven't even learned to use Git yet. So the next thing we want to do is to help you get started with Git and setting up a project with Git. Many people teach you how to use Git with the command line. They ask you to write in this black or white box, um, depending on whether you have used the terminal app uh, if you're on a Mac before. They ask you to type things into the command line and when you type something wrong, then you get an error message. And that is not really um, beginner friendly, especially if you don't come from a programming background. So what we are going to do is to throw away the command line today, and we are gonna use apps to help you get started with Git. Now, I would use the, the term clients and app interchangeably in this video series. So when I say Git client, I I'm saying the same thing, same thing as a Git app. Now, uh, first of all, let's introduce what are the good Git apps out there. My favorite Git client is this um, thing called Tower. You can go to git-tower.com and you'll be able to see it. Uh, Tower is extremely powerful. Uh, it has a lot of features. The only downside to Tower is it costs $55.20 a year. So if you are new to Git or if you're new to programming, you probably don't want to start with using Tower. You want to start with something that is free. So you will be exploring a few free alternatives as well. Now the best um, free alternative would prob probably be SourceTree. Uh, you can go to SourceTreeApp.com to find SourceTree. Uh, SourceTree is good. It looks good as well. It has the same features as Tower. At least most Git clients do have the same features. But SourceTree can be very buggy at times. Um, just a few mm, days ago when I was trying to make a test repo for this video that, I'll, that, that I'm making for you today, I ran into a few programming errors that I couldn't get uh, out of. So if you want to use source tree, that is fine. You can use source tree, but be prepared to encounter some bugs that you have to search for and 
you might not be able to resolve them. So that is the only downside to Source 3. Uh, another good client is Git Kraken. Uh, Kraken as in the sea monster Kraken, K-R-A-K-E-N. Git Kraken is a fancy uh, Git client. Um, it is pretty good, but I don't really like it because I think it focuses too much on the visuals and, and not really on what is important. But you can use it, it and many people do like Git Kraken. I'm just not a fan of it personally. So what I am... Uh, and the fourth Git client I'm going to introduce to you today is called Git Fork. So you can go to git-fork.com to get Fork. Um, Fork is currently in beta, so it doesn't cost any money right now. But I'm not too sure whether uh, it's going to cost money when it gets out of beta. So for today uh, and for this series, I'm going to show you how to use Git using Fork. So first of all, you want to download Fork um, for either Mac or Windows, depending on your platform. I have already went ahead and downloaded Fork on my computer. Um, you want to install Fork by dragging it to the Applications folder, especially if you're on a Mac. And when you open up Fork for the first time, you will come to this um, welcome screen. Now, Fork will ask you for a few information like your username, but in this case, it's a bit misleading because it is not a username. It is your name. Uh, because when we create save points and commits in Git, we want to let Git know who is the person who committed this um, commit. And the usage is a little bit more advanced when you have multiple people working on the same project. But we need an identifier. So you need to use your name and then you want to write your email in there as well. So this two information will be used as the identifier. Now, one thing that I like about Fork is um, when it comes to the welcome screen, there is this default source directory. The default source directory means when you copy projects from the internet onto your computer, it will go into the folder you specified over here by default. Um, this is not present in Source Tree, and I had a student copy, I mean, clone their project into their home folder, and makes it which makes it really really difficult to find. So um, in Fork, you can choose your default folder and in this case for this series I'm going to use this uh, git folder that is on my desktop as the default folder. So hit choose and then desktop and git so that and, and select open. So that is how you select the default source directory and once you're done you can click on finish. And git fork will open up this thing um, that is supposed to show you the repositories you have on your computer, or at least the repositories you have opened with Fork. Now, right now there is no repositories because we just installed Fork. So the next step is to create a repository. To do that, let's go into the Git folder and create a new project. I'm going to call this project, um, project. P-R-O-J-E-C-T. All right, project. Now, to create a git repository, um, we call that initializing a git repository. It's the same thing. You can go to file in fork and then click on create new repository. Then select the project folder, which should already be um, visible in your screen, like what I did over here, and click open. And then Fork will bring you to another screen where there is the project name, um, there is buttons like changes and all commits, branches, remotes, tags, and other stuff. We will go into these other details uh, in a later video. But at this point, we want to make sure that the Git repository is actually created. How do you do that? Is to go back into the project folder, open it up, and you should be able to see a .git folder. Now, 
take note that this dot git folder is a hidden folder by default, especially on a Mac. I'm not too sure about this on the Windows. So what you want to do is to show your hidden folders to be able to see it. You can Google around to, uh, you can Google how to do that by saying show hidden folders Mac and you should be able to find a command to do that pretty easily. So I won't be going into that. Now, there is a second way to create uh, the, uh, I mean, to, to initialize the Git repository and that is through the command line and that is pretty simple as well. So I'm going to show you how so first, you want to create the project folder and let's call this project 2 inside the, the place where you want to hold all your projects. Then you want to open this folder in your terminal. The easy way to do that is to drag the project into the terminal app and it will automatically navigate you to the correct folder. Now, I'm not going to go too much into details about how to use the terminal because that uh, I've already covered that in an article and I will point you to the article in the show notes so you can have a better re-edit. Now, for Git, we can initialize the, vid, uh, the video. We can initialize the Git repository by typing git, G-I-T, then space and init, I-N-I-T. So git init is the command to initialize a git repository. When you press enter, you should be able to see that a um, uh, uh, reply saying initialize empty git repository in the folder that you were in. Now, likewise, you can also check whether the git repository is correctly init by going to the project and you will be able to see a .git folder as well. So those are the two ways you can create a Git repository and that is where we will stop for today. We will go into the Git terminologies and how to actually use Git and what uh, what commits mean and what pushing, uh, pulling, pushing, fetching and other stuff in another video. So one more thing I want to share with you is whatever that I shared with you today can be done directly on a Mac because the Mac comes with Git installed in the system. If you are on Windows, you might need to install Git first and you can Google for instructions about installing Git. With that, we're done for this first video. There are more videos in the series. If you want to be updated regarding this series, then make sure you hit the subscribe button if you are listening to it on a podcast or the notification, uh, the subscribe button in YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube and I'll be able to send you the next video on Friday. Now, if you want to get an article and a video from me every Friday to help you become a better developer, you can go over to zellwk.com, uh, that is my blog, and sign up over there. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Happy Friday and I hope to see you again next week.